I don't know if you've seen any of, uh, of my videos, but to really miss the uh, point about what Salento was in the 16th, 17th century, this was the Emirates. We know crude oil today, and uh, the whole of the economy of the Arab states has grown as a result of the crude oil. But the first, the first well that was done in the United States that started to pump oil out was at the turn of the last century. Before that, what a lot of people don't know is that olive oil, not for dressing your salad, olive oil was considered crude oil. Just in the uh, town of Gallipoli, at the end of the 16th century, the historians, well, it's, I mean, that's history, they had an average of 70 ships on a daily basis, 70 ships loading up tons and tons of olive oil and taking it all over Europe. You can imagine, if you had to translate that into today, that was millions changing hands on a daily basis. That's why in Salento you see such an extraordinary and very rich architecture. So that's what makes Puglia, I think, very beautiful. When it comes to Italy, the Italian dream, it's about good food, amazing weather, lovely people, Italian style and architecture. Uh, the, the city of Florence, Venice, Rome and all the other cities is all about the architecture. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to go to the office. <laughs> so where are we exactly? So we're in the town of Malie. Mm. Beautiful and see it's interesting because the lento changes. You see the stone, these houses don't have any plaster. It's literally just a natural stone because Malia is very close to Cursi and these towns here where all the quarries where the Lecceze stone or the Pietra Lecceze gets quarried. And uh, so it's interesting as you go to different towns, perhaps later, you'll see that so the houses are in different colors because they're painted, because they're plastered. But here you, you have... This is the natural, this is the natural stone. So they're cleaning the stone on the outside of the building, so... Is uh, this part of a condominium, an HOA? No, this is uh, just a two-story, so um, it's, a, it's a beautiful corner building. And uh, when I took this property over, I cleaned my stone around. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the woman who owned the property upstairs didn't feel that it was necessary at the time. And then a year later, probably, she was sort of, you know, not happy about my bit looking, looking so great, pretty, so, <laughs> so this has just been going on at the moment. Well, it really does look amazing. And, uh, so these are your services, property rentals, property finder, property manager, property investment advice, nice. And he's uh, an art connoisseur. <laughs> Well, that's, that's, uh, that's my story. So we are, it's nice having a giant map like this, Salento with love right here in Marie. Uh I often spend time in Lecce here. We usually go, for example, we either go swimming, my, 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 my in-laws live on this side, so we drive around to get to San Gataldo, or we drive all the way and we, we swim, right. Baia Verde. After Baia Verde, I think it's... Uh, the GB. I think it's here. Punta della Suina. It's called the Spiaggia dei Innamorati. Okay, yeah. Zeus Beach. Zeus, yeah. yeah. That's, that's Zeus. Yeah, just there. Yeah. It's right after Baia just Verde. Then, just over here. Because then here you have Punta della Suina. Yeah. And the uh, G Beach. The farthest town I've ever been is Pescoluse. Oh, wow. You've never been to Santa Maria di Leuca? Magic. No. Magic. What is there? I mean, why is it magic, I guess? Well, magic, I think, for, for a couple of reasons. But you've got the Adriatic Sea there and the Ionian Sea here, and you've got the Mediterranean. So you've got the three seas meeting up here. And also, it was very much one of the first places that they used to arrive. So the Greeks, and they arrived, they arrived here. So there is a very, very strong presence of Greek 
um, um, kind of heritage within within this area. Doing a like a weatherman right now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, doing this. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I've actually just turned the screen around because this is the latest thing that we've done at the moment, but we haven't printed it yet uh, because of COVID. I need to get myself organised. But we've redone the map. Uh, and this is actually done by us, the map, or well, this is my screensaver. But the new map that uh, we're going to print will include, will include the province of Brindisi and Taranto. Because when we talk about Salento, Salento goes from the Gulf of Taranto, come across mm -hmm. here. So this bit here is not Salento really, but I've included it in the new map. Because I would like to assist people purchasing anywhere within that area with our services and consultancy. So, but this this is Salentum. So this was the, the the Roman province known as Salentum. But if you are from Lecce, you you know <laughs> the only bit that it's recognised as Salento would only be Lecce and <laughs> and just around. For some people from Lecce, actually, they say that to be a true Salentino. You've got to be within the city walls of the city of Lecce. So, uh, but yeah, so. I'm loving your table, actually. It's got some unique uh, features here. This is Olive. Olive. And when I decided I was going to open an office, I got a little country home. My parents have a country home here that they don't use anymore. So I spent quite a lot of money, bought all my equipment, all my machineries, and then went out searching for the right wood. First, I did that small one over there, um, and including designing the uh, the concrete f uh, leg. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then I decided to go big and created my desk for for the office. Well, you um, have a good interior design. So, sense. Uh, yeah, I worked about three months on that table uh, doing it. But yeah, it's not why we're here, but it's, no. still, I, it's the reason I talk about it is because I happen to know it's part of his uh, part of his story. First of all, why don't you tell us about your life before coming here a little bit? Uh, well, uh, I, I was, uh, if I've got to go back to when I was born. <laughs> it, it, always, it always pays to say that I was born in Switzerland. <laughs> Uh, we, might, we might go a little farther ahead in time, time because my batteries could die. <laughs> Well, I've spent 35 years in the UK, 32 years in the UK, and for the last 20 of that period of time, I've been an art dealer. And a little bit like with a vocation, I think, in terms of helping and growing, allowing artists to develop. And uh, I wasn't one of those art galleries uh, dealing with the higher end and the big names. I was going into art schools and art colleges and picking them up from that level and bringing them up. And that was my passion, I think. And some of them have become some international stars. I won't mention any names, but GX Gallery was the name of the gallery. And, um, and so I think my passion and my drive is always been to help people achieving a dream. I think in the last few years I've realized how important that is for me. To the point that uh, in 2014 I um, decided to sell all my businesses, including the gallery, I retained the real estate of everything that I owned uh, in England as well as in Italy. And within a couple of years, I really started to feel empty. Um, I just felt I didn't have a drive because, yeah, I was traveling around the world. I did a whole tour of Australia, Central America, uh, a lot of places, and I enjoy traveling very much. But I felt that there was something missing. And so two years ago, I started this journey and created Salento with Love, which, to be honest, Salento with Love was created many, many years earlier because I started to buy properties here in Salento for my own purpose and for turning them into beautiful holiday homes. Um, so I created this concept of the name Salento with Love, including the logo was created, I think, in 2007, 2008. But two years ago, I decided to really throw myself in, including setting up two companies, one in the UK, one here and opening up offices and, and really doing things properly. So to go back to your question, I think my biggest drive is always allowing people to achieve their dream uh, because I think it's, uh, it's a very fulfilling experience for me. That's awesome. Now you mentioned property of your own. Is there a chance we could see your properties? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I would love, because that's my thing. Uh, I'm an investor here, and I really feel like to have ex to to 
Say you're going to help someone in something, you should have experience in it personally. Well, at the moment I have uh, three which are available to potentially go and see because all my portfolio of properties, when I decided to kind of retire from work, I rented them long term rather than using them as holiday homes. Okay. And so, and which is also one of the things that I was promoting quite a lot here in Salento for people to side invest or, or invest in real estate. But yes, we can see some of my properties that when I did them in 2003 and four and five, I stopped in 2007 purchasing property here in Salento. Cool. It was a good way for me to escape from London, coming over and dealing with buildings as an architect and, and everybody else and um, doing diversifying my, my purchases uh, from the UK to Salento. So how did this idea of property management develop? Well, everything that I've developed and I'm offering clients is based on what was my need while I was in the UK. Uh, I could see why for me it was easy to buy the first unit, the second, the third one, because I had family here, I developed good networks with builders and other people. Um, but I, I was just thinking, how can somebody that doesn't speak the language or doesn't live here is going to manage to achieve the same? How are they going to communicate to the cleaner or to somebody just to tell them, look, we're arriving on such a day? And, and so the idea developed based on what was my needs. And yes, I could ring my brother and say, I'm arriving in two weeks. Can you get my apartment ready? Or I've got a book in there, a book in there. And I could communicate with the cleaners. And, but if somebody wants the property here, there are no property management companies. So my first thought was, well, it's not about selling a property because selling a property, it's, it's easy. That's something that you want. You want to achieve that dream uh, and then you, you just pursue that. A property, is, it's, it's a big thing. And if you don't live in the country and you don't speak the language, then it can become a burden rather than an asset. So the whole idea of setting up property management for me was to complete the circle. There's definitely more to this interview, but we decided to go to Corigliano di Otranto, and I'm sharing that in this video. Here we were able to check out a Spanish castle, grab some lunch, and visit a property that he has in his listings. In this video, we'll even tour the old historical center. So we've got a, a giant castle, Bar Castello, a giant yeah, castle. That's why it's called uh, Bar Castello. Castello dei Monti. The Monti, the mountains, Monti. Uh, it was the family. The Monti was the, the surname of the family, and uh, this was built by the Spanish. Okay. So this was uh, like um, a military base. Then he went through so many changes, and uh, it was purchased by the borough about uh, probably 10, 15 years ago. It's totally refurbished, and it's beautiful how they've uh, opened up a lot of the rooms and now they've given it to uh, an art association which is called Castello Volante. Mm -hmm. I want everyone to get a little bit of uh, perspective here. Today is October... Today is October 29th and I'm sweating. <laughs> uh, I'm, swe I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> and it is so hot. Uh, I live in North Italy. My wife last night, she's like, it's freezing up here. And so I, even I am like uh, a little bit just just time to move to South Italy, right? Because there are, it's just, the weather is amazing. I don't know what to say. But this is a really cool castle. I have not actually seen one like this down here in the South East uh, ever. It reminds me of Zungoli, but Zungoli is more, is smaller because it has the same circular type of structures on the sides. But this one is a lot more intricate. And this castle, firstly, was a military base because uh, this area was constantly under the attacks of the Turkish. And then, uh, then gradually became, uh, in fact, inside it's got a beautiful fresco and the balcony over there, which is very intricately done, um, was a different era when this became almost like a very rich residence for the family, for the Monti family. Also, uh, became uh, an oil press. So downstairs, uh, the majority of the holes in the underground are frantoio, 
Uh, so an oil mill. Yeah. Uh, because in Salento, that's what generated all the revenue in the 16th, 17th century, making it really, really wealthy as a region. He definitely knows a lot about history than I do <laughs> for Italy. I walk around and say, that's a pretty building. That's a pretty I'm, building. I'm walking inside the bar, so I'm going to res... Oh, 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 no. We were going to go inside the bar. The star-shaped ceilings. Uh, Those are beautiful. Yeah. Always beautiful. These are Volte alla Stella. Volte, these are Volte Stella. Mm. But there's different types of Volte Stella. But also, some people know them as uh, Volte uh, Leccesi because it's interesting that uh, it was the first uh, places where they started, uh, builders started to experiment with this type of construction was over here in Salento. Before cool. that, they were round. So, Volte. Gotcha. And, uh, yeah, well. A little bit different from the summer where this place is Puppy. yeah packed, packed. <laughs> well we've got quite a few people joining so we're just waving to everybody hey everyone follow follow me on youtube yes <laughs> follow him on youtube so we have a tuna sandwich here pulian tuna uh, from puglia uh frizzoline there it's just it's a very interesting type of meal it's from what i understand the, a way to preserve bread over time. So what they do is it's really, really hard bread and then right about when you're about to eat it, you soak it in a little bit of water for, I don't know, there's, there's no actual time frame, right? There is a, a word for it, sponsare. 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 To sponsor your... No, <laughs> no with a Z, with a Z. <laughs> sponsare. <laughs> and so then they put uh, various things on top. This has tomato and uh, oregano probably and then panzerotti I don't know what is what were I they? think it's potato and cheese but it might just be potato I didn't try that one but the panzerotti in Lecce are completely different to what a panzerotto would be in Bari yeah it's just like something different or yeah, in completely. Naples as well as well they use the word panzerotto but again something different if anyone's interested in more information about this property, feel free to contact Davide using the link in the description or send an email to info plus davo at salentowithlove.com. Either way, you'll receive a detailed packet that Davide has prepared himself to prepare the way for an investor to give some ideas of what this property could turn into. If you're interested in investing in Salento and Perhaps you're interested in some of Davide's services. Make sure to subscribe to his channel and just let him know that Davo sent you. So where, how did you find this one? Uh, th this, this particular one actually was quite interesting. I was contacted by somebody that knew someone and uh, they've seen what we are doing here in Salento and uh, they, they didn't want to put it with an agency, but they, 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 they wanted uh, to, to really show it out there to the world. So I came across, and in fact, it's got no signs or anything showing it uh, or, or advertising the sale of the property. And around this particular building, I've developed a whole concept because I fell in love with the property and I called it Charming Palazzi of Salento. So not yeah. just this, but what a lot of this palazzi can go back to be. Well, before they were just private residence for a family, maybe two families living in this, two brothers or a brother and a sister. Um, but now they can become something completely different. Architecturally, they're just beautiful. Mm. And then you open the balcony from any of the rooms upstairs and you have this right opposite. So, uh, it's just towering. It's the entire place, like downstairs there's like commercial space or is it all residential? No, it's all residential. Mm. And this so is an access this here? Is one, this is one of the access points. So this is the edge of the building. So it goes from yeah, here. You can usually see the dividing lines. <laughs> yeah, and there's like this sort of steps here. So downstairs he's got three points of entrance and a window around the side. It's interesting actually, the window around the side is sort of quite high but inside it's got a step mm -hmm. because uh, the young girls used to perhaps they were not allowed to leave the room or the house but they they could just step on there and see what was happening <laughs> outside so this this window around the side here and the view from the the roof garden it is it, very very special but yeah this this window here 
uh, on the inside he's got a step about that high so two steps or one big step and so you can just imagine perhaps the young girls just there chatting or looking at uh, what was going on outside <laughs> you don't really think about that kind of thing but uh, until you see is that green section all part of it no it just stops so that's the edge okay so this is the edge that's here. the edge of the building yes wow in them days was picking up on that but are there any like fresco not in this one uh, because this one is not a really an ancient it was okay. built in the 19 late 1930s at the end of the 1930s with the using the same technique so it's got uh, star vaulted share ceilings in every room and the garden is wow so we're right here in the middle of town where would you say the, the castle is the center? Uh, well, the, the castle is on the edge. The center, it's to the right of the castle. So the castle is right ahead of us on the left. And this is right down there. And uh, you see there are some businesses here. A pescaria, an antica, riflessi. It's a glasses store. Or is it, it's glasses store, right? Yeah, yeah ottica. And this is the municipio, so this is the, the council, uh, the, uh, the local borough office. Okay. So this is where That's the mayor... The police park here. This is where the mayor uh, would reside, and around the side here you've got a local police. When you say reside, he lives there? Uh, well, but this, the office, the cabinet of... Uh, okay, of just the, of the, Yeah. No, not, not living in there. And that's the castle there. So, most people ask me, where are all the people? Uh, well, I don't like to use the word siesta because it upsets me a little bit. Because <laughs> we're not in Spain. <laughs> but, uh, so we use nap. <laughs> Italians do, yes, Italians they do like to stop also because businesses close at, well, apart from COVID and everything else that's happening in the world, but things close down at one o'clock in the afternoon and reopen at 4.30 in the afternoon. So you'll always have this gap of time where things are very quiet and uh, easy to walk around, and especially when the temperatures are good, like now, brilliant. So do you want to just loop around the old town? Yeah, let's do this. Yeah, we'll loop. It's amazing how much property yeah. looks abandoned and... But they're not for sale. There. They're What's the point of hanging on to them? Well, uh, the, the point is that it's, uh, the, the, they don't need the money and... Uh, Someday they'll be worth something or they just don't want to take the efforts of... Well, I mean, there must be people out there that own things and... They just want to own them, just you know, like collectors. They just yeah. want to own something just I for the sake of property. exactly. And uh, what's happening is that gently or slowly, a lot of these people are getting older, and uh, uh, there is a lot of burdens financially on people that then are left with these properties. So they're gradually deciding to sell some of the properties. But uh, along here, for example, these three or four palazzi are owned by one family. They obviously have no signs of. <laughs> wanting to sell them <laughs> uh, and we're in the square of Corigliano we got a pillar here what is this is something historical yeah it's just here well we're looking at uh, this uh, this uh, this is all itinerary but the historic uh, well this is the tower of Oh, I didn't see that. It looks like Back to the Future, actually, the, tower, the clock tower of... Marty! <laughs> yeah, it looks like exactly <laughs> the one. <laughs> but this is an historic piece, which is quite interesting. Arco Lucchetti. Vico Freddo is interesting. Cold, this one here. Wow. There's a whole explanation detailed. here in English as well. It's got some writing on the side here. It's, it's detailed in like every single side. Yeah. In the middle, on the edges. Wow. Are those uh, flamingos? <laughs> They're, um, uh, well, it says a geese. I'm a dying. Chicken. It says a chicken with a ring. 
Chicken with a ring. Yeah. A geese and a, a fig tree. Uh, animals here. 497, am I reading that right? Yep. That's when it was made. Wow. So they decided to move it here. What was the yeah. motive? <laughs> it's probably uh, a very important family that lived here. They decided to buy it and put it in this, their entrance. Uh, the Basilians, this, this, uh, this is actually a very old town going back to the 9th century mm -hmm. uh, with the Basilian monks that came from, uh, from um, the Middle East and um, bringing Christianity over. So this, this was actually quite a, a very important base, uh, Corigliano d'Otranto. This building is a bank? This, bu a bank? this, this being a building uh, no, is a private residence, probably downstairs was a bank. Don't go away yet, but that's it for this video. Here's some sneak peeks of an upcoming video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so that you'll know when we share our experience touring through this abandoned building in the middle of Corigliano d'Otranto. All right, thanks everyone, see you next time.